Hello friends, welcome to my channel Q Analysis and today we are going to talk about acceptance criteria. Why is acceptance criteria so important for a taster? So here we go. Before we start this presentation, I'd ask you to do me a favor, please, if you like to learn more on quality analysis and software testing, please feel free to subscribe my channel and if you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my videos and help me to spread the word across. Thank you friends and let's move on to our today's presentation. Acceptance criteria. What is acceptance criteria? So acceptance criteria is the condition which a software application should satisfy when it is accepted by a user or customer. So a user or customer, they will accept your software only in that condition when all the acceptance criteria associated with the software are fulfilled. Now, let us go ahead and figure out what exactly mean of uh, what is the meaning of acceptance criteria or the conditions. Acceptance criteria mentions a set of statements, rules, conditions which cover the functional and non-functional behavior that the software must meet. It is super important because projects succeed or fail based on the ability of the team to meet the customer documented or perceived acceptance criteria. Yes friends, so whenever you get in a project, you start working on a project, your client, they provide you certain set of goals, certain set of uh, achievable objectives, and these are mentioned in form of acceptance criteria. Like for example, they ask you to develop a website. You develop a website and there are functional requirement, non-functional requirement, and performance requirement, a user requirement. There are different kind of things which are required from that website. There's a whole set of team of developers, testers, business analysts who are working on it. Once it is done and you want to deliver your project to your client, your client will go ahead and he will check all those acceptance criteria which he agreed upon while giving this project to you. And if you are meeting up all the conditions which were defined in acceptance criteria, then only he can say, okay, you are done with what we expected and here is the payment. And then, then there you receive the payment for the service you have provided. When we clearly define the criteria upfront, we avoid surprises at the end of a sprint or at the end of release or the end of delivery and ensure a high level of customer satisfaction. So, the thing which I mentioned earlier in example, it itself is mentioned over here that you should be very much clear in defining the acceptance criteria upfront. Now, acceptance criteria, as I mentioned in my first point, can be divided into two parts or two types. First is functional acceptance criteria and the other one is non-functional acceptance criteria. Functional acceptance criteria identify the specific user tasks functions or business process that must be in place whenever your software is functional or when it is expected to be functional what are the specific user tasks functions and business processes that must be in place everything should be defined in this functional acceptance criteria moving on to the next one that is non-functional acceptance criteria in this you have to identify specific non-functional conditions the implementation must meet such as design of the elements if a specific performance is critical to the acceptance of a user story that also should be included plus if at all there is any kind of restrictions uh, depending on the volume or performance or any other thing that should also be mentioned over here in this non-functional acceptance criteria what should be the base of acceptance criteria this is a very important question and many a times many users they have asked me to request this they keep on asking what should be the base of acceptance criteria acceptance criteria should be based upon following points so we are going to discuss this point the first one is 
negative scenarios of the functionality. Working condition base case scenarios, okay, all those base case scenarios on which your uh, system is working is fine, but when a user is paying you for something, he is more concerned or your client is more concerned about all those worst case scenarios or negative scenarios where the functionality is big. The impact of user stories on other features. If it is epic or a user story and which is impacting the other features and because of you, if others are getting impacted, then that should also be included in this assistance criteria. Any UX concern? So if we have any user or design related concern, that also should be mentioned over here. Functional and non-functional use cases. There are certain kind of use cases, as I mentioned earlier, anything related to the functionality and anything which is non-functional like performance, or speed, volume, stress or something, and load of data, or something like this, everything, all these use cases should be mentioned over there. Performance concerns and guidelines, what is the exact way of maintaining a high performance solution or providing a high performing solution, what are the exact conditions that customers should follow, everything should be written what system and feature intend to do okay you might be developing a kind of feature and then depending upon the understanding between the client and the developers and testers and business analysts you come up to a conclusion that this is what the software or the solution is going to do so exactly what system feature has been developed and what it is intended to do that should be mentioned over there system feature does not do anything isn't supposed to do so anything which it has to do and all those things which it has not to do. For example, let's say if somebody is asking you to make a ticket uh, reservation system and in ticket reservation system it says it is to function only for the ticket booking. So now by default you may, let's say you are a developer or so you are making it and then you develop a system, ticket reservation system in which you are doing reservation at the same time you are doing cancellation. No. Ticket reservation and modification or updation, changing of dates or changing of the record should be allowed. Only addition and updation cases are allowed. Deletion case or cancellation cases are not allowed. The system should not allow any kind of deletion or cancellation. Now, this is known as functional and what are the function things which the system is supposed to do and which is the, what are the function things which the system is not supposed to do. Now, if it is a, if thousand people are accessing the same application at a time, it will be it will be working. But if ten thousand people are accessing the same system, it, there will be a performance lag, and the system may start to hang, something like that. So this is known as non-functional use case. End-to-end -end user flow is also a very important criteria. We should be considered uh, acceptance criteria should include end-to-end -end flow right away from the time when the system is being used till the time when system is uh, getting over from user end user till the system or database and uh, response and acknowledgement for example a ticket management system the example which i gave time the user is logging into from that very time when the user is logging into system and then going ahead and doing some transactions putting some values uh, modifying it is being saved and then he's retrieving it viewing it printing it and he receives the, after the payment he is getting acknowledgement and then he logs out and again he logs in and he wants to check out something everything should be covered end to end now these are the things which should be covered but there are certain things which should not be covered acceptance criteria should not be based upon following things following points these are code review was done or not non blocker or major issues performance testing performed or not acceptance and functional testing done or not done these are the conditions which should not be mentioned in the acceptance criteria acceptance criteria has nothing to do with the code review blocker or non blocker issue performance testing for, um, sorry non blocker or major issues performance testing related uh, conditions or acceptance and functional testing is done or not this thing should not be a part of acceptance criteria your acceptance criteria should be strict, strictly based upon all these points which I have mentioned earlier. And then when to define the acceptance criteria. Now this is also a very important question which many people keep on asking me when to define the acceptance criteria. So I would recommend to write and review the criteria 
before implementation and when I say before the implementation begins means that very time when you are done with your requirement and your requirement is complete and you know what exactly you have to do and what are the timelines and what are the expectations from the customer and client at that very time you should write and get your uh, acceptance criteria reviewed to ensure that you have captured customer's intent rather than the development reality okay and then acceptance criteria should be defined before designing or coding or even test planning yes this is a very important point that the acceptance criteria should be defined before you start with designing coding or even test planning acceptance criteria are often added during backlog refinement or during this sprint planning or meeting so that is a very common practice that acceptance criteria is often added while backlog is being defined or during the sprint planning meeting and acceptance criteria defined after development has started merely verifies the functionality built works rather than verifying that the functionality meets the user requirement and expectation so many a time it happens that people they don't pay uh, proper importance to acceptance criteria and then what you see is just a verification of the functionality and it is not the complete acceptance criteria to verify whether the user requirement and expectations are met so you have to be very careful on those lines why is acceptance criteria important for a tester i'd say acceptance criteria is very important not only for testers but also for developers product owners business analysts but since in this blog we are talking mostly in terms of testing and software qa professionals so i'll mention why is acceptance criteria important for a tester? Acceptance criteria are a set of statements, each of which has a clear pass or fail result that specify both functional. When I say functional, it is minimal marketable functionality and non-functional, that is minimal quality requirement applicable to the current stage of project integration. These requirements they present conditions of satisfaction. Yes, my friend. If in one word you have to say, or one line you have to say, what is acceptance criteria? Acceptance criteria is conditions of satisfaction. With this, we come on to the most important point of this presentation, that is, there is no partial acceptance. Either a criteria is met or it is not. So friends, whenever we talk about acceptance criteria, it is like black and white. There is no gray space. Either it is yes or it is no. You can't have a partial acceptance. It has to be 100% confirmed that either your acceptance criteria are being met. If it is being met, then only you are being paid for it. If it is not, then your functions are not working and it is no more payable. Acceptance criteria add certainty to what the team is building and what is going to be delivered to the users or to the client. Acceptance criteria ensures functional and non-functional completeness of the product. Acceptance criteria is dynamic and can be modified over in course of a sprint as the user story is further defined or refined. Acceptance criteria must be expressed clearly in simple language, the customer would use just like the user story without any ambiguity so as to what the expected outcome is, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. They must be testable, easily translated into one or more manual and automated test cases or test scenarios. Last but not the least, it helps to answer two most important questions of software development. These questions are, did we build the product right? Did we build the right product? Yes, I'm talking about verification and validation, which revolves around these two questions. And these are five very important points when you talk about acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria help you to have a certainty 
and it is not only with your customer it is also within your team and everybody knows in which direction they are going what they have to do and what would be the final outcome of the whole exercise acceptance criteria help not only developers testers the team as well as the users and the client to know the functional and non functional completeness of the product Acceptance criteria is a dynamic thing and it can keep on changing, it evolves in due course of time. It should not take place on a very large scale but more or less it can be refined in due course of time and acceptance criteria must be very clearly expressed in a sim simple language so that customers who are non-technical they should be able to understand it without any ambiguity and expected outcome should be very much clear. And once both the parties have accepted it and they have agreed to it, depending on the terms and conditions mentioned in acceptance criteria, everybody may be in the team or may be outside the team, business or technical side, everybody try to decide, try to work and figure out answer to these two questions. Did we build the product right and did we build the product right? Did we build the right product and did we build the product right? These are the two things which we try to find out, for which we try to find out the answer using acceptance criteria. So friends, please let me know if you like my this presentation and if yes, feel free to like, share and subscribe my videos. You can subscribe to my channel Q Analysis. I have created different kind of videos on software testing. So feel free to subscribe my channel and uh, thanks a lot. It takes a lot, lot of effort to create such kind of videos. I need your support. Please help me to spread the word across testing community and you can also join me over LinkedIn. Feel free to get in touch with me over LinkedIn and uh, you, can, you can be in touch and you, can, and you can share your questions over here. I'll try to answer as much as I can. So stay in touch. Thanks a lot. Enjoy and happy to wish you a happy destiny. Thank you. Bye bye.